So maybe you're wondering, why do I need to hear about communication or learn about communication? Isn't it all just kind of common sense? Well, as the French philosopher Voltaire pointed out, common sense is not so common. Have you ever had a situation where there's been a miscommunication or a time when you and the other person just couldn't seem to get on the same page? Well, no matter what your professional field or your personal circumstances, communication will undoubtedly be an important factor for success. So, uh, to start our conversation about communication, I really just want to start at the beginning and define what communication is exactly. What are we talking about here? And, and just start from the beginning. Here. So, communication, very simply, is the process of sending and receiving symbols to establish mutual understanding and shared meaning. Simple enough, right? But allow me, and you know, if you'll indulge me a moment, let's just break this down very quickly and look at some of the different constituent parts of this definition. First of all, uh, communication has is it's a process, right? There's a very specific process that takes place when we communicate. Um, so it, it's not uh, it's not like an engine that just kind of can can break down and things like that. But there's there, there are things that happen. And so if we can learn what those elements are, what the process of, of communication is, and understand the elements that are there and what the variables are, then we can begin to uh, be more effective in communicating by, uh, you know, enhancing the way that we utilize those variables, the way that we engage with those variables. So um, that's one thing that understanding that there is a process at play here. And, uh, and it's not overly complicated, but complicated enough, given that every one of those uh, elements has variables within it. So, um, but there is a process. There is a process that takes place when we communicate. Um, there's also this idea of sending and receiving symbols, right? It's not just, we need to remember communication is not a one-way street. It is very much a two-way street. We, we are both senders and receivers. All parties involved in a communication experience are senders and receivers at the same time. It's not just one or the other. So we can't just be focused on what it is we want to to say and get out there. Um, we have to also be open to receiving and really effectively listening and understanding what the other person is communicating and not just what they're saying, but also you know, the nonverbal elements and then the you know underlying cultural elements and those types of things. Um, so uh, communication is a two-way process, both sending and receiving, and, uh, and it's, it's, there's a lot happening there. So we've got to be fully engaged in all of it. Communication also involves symbols. Right. So very clearly symbols here. So um, no, not these kind of symbols. So right? communication involves symbols. It involves things that represent something else. It could be words. Just pick a word, whatever that word is. And, and those, that language is changing all the time. Right. But we're constantly adding new symbols and and words and things that are that are coming into favor and out of favor. And and, uh, and it's not just words, but it's also, again, visual representations of things. Think about emojis and how those have changed over time. And, and uh, you know, road signs, those are symbols and how they're different in different places. And the meaning is different of those things. So, but communication ultimately it comes down to symbols and, and people are going to see these things differently depending on, on your perspective and your culture. But um, so there can be some miscommunication and it's not just verbal. Again, as I said, there are nonverbal symbols as you see here uh, as well. So, um, but we need to understand that the communication is about symbols and these symbols really just represent an idea. So we, we make these things up, we make up these words and we make up these gestures and these, these things, but they represent something else behind that. Okay. And then the purpose of communication in general is to establish some sort of mutual understanding and shared meaning, right? Successful communication involves, um, first of all, having this shared understanding of what the other person is saying. It can involve achieving a goal in there as well, but you can't achieve that goal if you're not on the same page, if you can't establish that that mutual understanding and shared meaning of the word or the symbol, uh, whatever form it takes, um, right? So um, just for example, you know, if I put this picture up and I said, what is this? You know, well, if you're you know, an English speaker from the United States, you would probably say that's a cow. Although, you know, some people would be more specific and say, well, that's a Holstein or that's a, you know, and they, or they may not be familiar with that type of cow. It's not the kind that, that is raised in your area or whatever, right? Different parts of the United States 
I tend to have cows that thrive differently there. So, but we would, you know, generally probably say just to, just to keep it simple, we would say cow, right? But why is that called a cow? What I mean, why why don't we call that a fork, or a table, or a, you know, a, who's a magatzet or whatever you want to call it? We call it a cow because somebody you know previously said, well, that's a cow, and that's what we're going to call it, and somebody else agreed and said, okay, and then from there it just kind of took off, and everybody understood that when you say cow, you're basically talking about an animal such as this. Now there are different, again, different kind of cows, but, but that this is a cow, right? And there's no other reason behind that, but even as simple as that is, um, it, it involves that mutual understanding and shared meaning. And without that, it would be worthless. That, that word, that symbol would be worthless because we wouldn't be on the same page, right? And again, we need to remember that this really comes back to symbols. Again, we don't have to use the word cow. We could change that word right now. We could start calling this animal something else. They won't mind. I can tell you, growing up in a farming community, they're pretty dumb. They don't know what they're called. So if we wanted to change the name, we could. We just have to get enough agreement for other people to start calling it that. That's all it takes. Cow is not uh, you know, a magical word. Um, we could call them whatever we want, as long as other people are on the same page with what we mean by that. Okay. So again, very simply, communication is just a process of sending and receiving symbols to establish mutual understanding and shared meaning. So, you know, what is that? A dozen words or so? Simple enough, right? And there's a lot of complexity within that. But that's where we're starting from. When we talk about communication, that's what we mean. The process of sending and receiving symbols to establish mutual understanding and shared meaning. If you have questions about the definition of communication or, or what we mean by that, please feel free to email me. I'd love to talk to you about that and hear from you there. In the meantime, I hope this has been helpful for you in again, establishing that foundational understanding of what communication is at its core and, uh, and how it might be useful to us.